Hey guys, Damien here. Um, what I want to do today is I have a review that I'd like to do. I've never done, never quite done this before, so this will be interesting. Um, but two products I've used, at least one of them I've used quite a bit, and I've got a newcomer here. And these are sous vide machines, sous vide, sous vide, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, what I've got here is an Anova Culinary sous vide machine circulator, and then I've got the brand new. Just got this in the mail a couple days ago, the Jewel by Chef Steps. And so uh, I'm going to go through my experiences with both of them. I've had a lot more experience with the A Nova, been using it for for probably the last at least year and a half. The A Nova has been an absolute workhorse. Um, my wife and I run a meal prep business, so this A Nova cooks anywhere from 30 to 40 pounds of chicken every week consistently and hasn't faltered once so I definitely have to give credit there it's been an absolute workhorse um, I'm gonna go through some uh, some stats some basic specifications on both units um, as well as I'm gonna do some tests and the various tests I'm gonna do is uh, you know a cold start how long it takes for the circulator to get up to temperature and different things like that so Without further ado, let's get started. So looking at, um, even just looking at them physically, first of all, um, the, uh, the Jewel definitely has, is a prettier design. It's newer, and it's from Chef Steps. And it's very, very sleek and small. So if you want to travel, and we have traveled with our Anova before, and it does take up more room, but if you're going to travel or stick it in a drawer or something like that, the Chef Steps uh, sous vide circulator is definitely uh, the better one for obviously its compact design. There's pros and cons to that, obviously. Um, this is the A Nova, and you can see just putting them next to each other just how much larger um, the A Nova is. But with the larger size, it does have some extra functionality, I think, that I really like. Um, this is the jewel box. I don't have the original Nova box. We've had it for so long now. Uh, no idea where the box is. But let's go over some stats. First of all, the Nova is an 800 watt heater versus the jewel is 1100 watts. So I'm really curious how that's going to play into the, um, the testing that I do as far as you know, uh, heating up a bucket of water, exact same amount of water, how long does it take each one of them to come up to temperature? How long does it take each one to recover once you put something cold, um, say like a bag of chicken or steak or something, something that's chilled into the water, it's going to bring the temp down. How long is it going to take each one of these to recover and bring them back up to your cooking temperature? Um, as far as the height, um, this one is 14.75 inches tall. This little guy is all of 11, so definitely more compact. Um, 2.75 inches wide for the A Nova versus 1.85 inches for the Jewel. Uh, and as far as weight, it's not a huge deal. I mean, it's not like it's a laptop or a camera where the weight's a, a major concern, but the A Nova is rated at two and a half pounds, whereas the Jewel is 1.28 pounds. Um, Another different thing, another thing I found very different between these two, and this will really play a part in uh, how much you're cooking, is the size of the water bath that each one of them is rated for. And by that I mean, you know, the amount of water it's able to heat and keep heated. And it, basically, it's, just, it's rating for the water bath. The A Nova is rated between four and five gallons, so that's 15 to 19 liters of water. Now, and the Chef Step, uh, or I'm sorry, the Jewel by Chef Steps, even though it's smaller, it does have that more powerful 1100 watt heater in it. So it's actually rated, and the only thing I could find, there's no maximum, but I found 10 plus gallons or 40 plus liters. So four to five gallons, 10 plus gallons. So the Jewel was already rated at twice the capacity of what the Anova can do. And I'm really curious, we've got a, I do have a very large water bath that I use that's actually much larger than the A Nova is rated for, but it does do it. You just have to give it time to uh, rebound and keep everything up to the right temperature. But it can do a larger volume. I'm guessing 
we'll see on testing, but I'm guessing the jewel is going to be even better on that. Uh, maximum temps, uh, ANOVA here rated at 210 degrees Fahrenheit, the jewel at 208, pretty much the same thing. I'm not entirely sure what you'd even cook at 208 and 200, 210 degrees. I've never done it. My main things that we cook are, you know, we do shrimp, we do chicken, we do steak, and uh, you know, vegetables, and none of those do you actually cook at 200 plus degrees. Um, now the minimum immersion and maximum immersion levels, and, and that means, you know, the minimum level of water you need versus the max that can go up on the unit. Uh, this is also very different. The, the minimum immersion for the ANOVA is two and a half inches, so you have to have at least two and a half inches off the bottom of it. Uh, to cover the heating element and the circulator in the bottom. The, the jewel only needs uh, one and a half inches off the bottom because the circulator is so small and at the bottom. The maximum level you can go up, the ANOVA is rated at seven and a quarter inches and the jewel is rated at eight inches. Uh, another big difference between the units as far as you know, if you splash them, you get them wet, the uh, the Jewel is rated, they say waterproof design, I'm not really willing to test it and dump the thing in water, but um, it says it'll you know, withstand splashes and everything, uh, whereas the Anova, I'm very leery about getting it wet, so if you look at this, this is a, this is a little touch screen, it's not real fancy, but it's a touch screen, and on the back it's got vents and all the circuitry, so if you were to dump this thing in water, I'm pretty sure it would kill it. Whereas the, the Jewel, if it fell in water and you pulled out real quick, again, I haven't done it, I really don't want to kill a $200 um, gadget, so I'm not going to do that. But, you know, that, that goes to the Jewel as well. Um, now price, price right now, I got my Jewel, uh, I pre-ordered it, actually pre-ordered both of these. So this is actually the non-Wi-Fi version of the ANOVA. They do have a Wi-Fi version. Um, the Jewel has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The ANOVA is just Bluetooth, which works just fine. I still haven't exactly uh, realized why you would need Wi-Fi on a sous vide cooker. Maybe, um, actually, I don't know. Maybe you're sitting at work and you've got everything prepped in a bucket, and before you leave work, you want to... Uh, you know, remotely connect and start your sous vide. I don't know. That's the only thing I can really think of. Um, haven't had any use. Like I said, I haven't had any any desire, or I haven't felt like I've been lacking at all with the lack of Wi-Fi in the Nova. The new one does have Wi-Fi. I don't think you can even get this one anymore. Like I said, I've already had it over a year and a half, and it has performed like a champ. Um, so both of them, one hundred and ninety-nine dollars. And it kind of depends on you know what you're looking for. So uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I want to take a look at the exterior and the aesthetics and functionality of the two different exteriors because they are, even though this the Anova is larger, there are certain things that it offers I think that a lot of people would appreciate. Um, the main difference is the Anova has this touch screen available, and it's got a wheel that you can adjust the temperature with and you can adjust the timer, uh, everything right on the screen. You don't need a phone and an app to do that. With the Jewel, you absolutely have to connect to the Jewel, uh, whether it's uh, wirelessly through uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and you have to control it with the app. There's one button on the top. Only thing that button is start and stop it. That's all it does. You can't set the temperature. You can't set a timer or anything on this unit without an app. So that's kind of a hindrance. Um, so, you know, it's a trade-off. So let me zoom in and show some other differences I think are really important and things to consider. Let's start with the exterior of the Jewel by Chef Steps. Now, right off the bat, uh, especially looking at it next to the Inova, you can see how small it is. It's nice and white. It's a lot more Apple-ish, if you'd ask me, even down to the plug. The plug's got this nice round just looks nice versus you know the regular industrial plug of even uh, you know, a computer power supply or just about anything has that that design versus the nice white plug of the jewel. Uh, let's set the Anova aside. Let's just take a look at the jewel here. Um, now looking at the exterior, right off you can see there's no screen. All there is is a button on the top. 
and that button just turns the uh, circulator on and off. There's one little LED indicator light. It only has three different modes, uh, unless I'm wrong. There is a, a light that indicates when it's heating, when it's ready to go, it's heated the water up to your specified temperature, and when it's off. Other than that, there are no controls on this. Um, looking at the back, we have a, a clamp here. And so far, from what I can tell, that works with just about any container you might want to use, whether it's circular, square, rectangular, uh, it clamps onto just about anything. And uh, you get this little bumper on the back, and that protects the finish. And on the bottom here, we've got this little foot pad, and the foot pad is magnetic. I've only used it once or twice, but if you've got a metal pan, the idea is, I'd probably use a bigger one, but you can simply, without using the clamp, you can simply set this in the pan, and it magnetically sticks to the bottom so it doesn't fall over. Now you take, you fill this with water, and you put your food in, and you're good to go. Now you do have to use an app, so again, like I said, there, there is no uh, screen on the outside. There's, there's no controls. You can't change. You can't change anything about the temperature setting. Uh, there's no timer to be set um, without the app. Um, all those features are available on the app. My only other maybe, maybe complaint would be this ejection port. So this is where the hot water comes out. So you've got this tiny little circulator down here, and this is where it sucks the water in and ejects it out this port. Now, I really love how shallow this is because you don't have to have a lot of water. My only complaint is that you can't change the, uh, the direction of, uh, of the hot water coming out. And the reason I say that is I normally cook in a uh, circular container. So in this case, with um, we usually use a larger container. Let me show you something larger, much larger like this, because we do cook a lot of chicken at a time. And so if we mount, if we stick the jewel in here, what ends up happening is this little ejection port down here, it just shoots the hot water against this back wall. Versus the ANOVA has different ways you can change the direction of the ejection port. I like to have the water circulating. But that's just me. If anyone out there has done any testing to see if that actually affects the cooking, I would love to know. I haven't had time to do it, but I'm guessing maybe it doesn't have a huge impact, but you know, maybe just a little bit. So the jewel is very pretty, uh, very compact, very nice to use, but it requires an app. Uh, whether you're using you know your iPhone, your Android. Android tablet or any iOS device, um, but does require the app in order to work correctly. Well, work at all, quite frankly. So we'll take a look at the Anova here, and you can already, you you can see you've seen already how much larger it is. A large part of that is, when you really look at it, a large part of that is that screen on top, and. It is at least a year and a half, maybe at this point two years older than the Jewel. You know, as things go, uh, technology progresses. But there's three different ways you can actually change, and this is this is something I like about the Nova. It's been a workhorse. It's not quite as powerful. Uh, we're gonna do some testing, and you're gonna see that here shortly. But there's three different ways you can change the direction of the water instead of just shooting into the back wall of your container. First of all, there is a plastic piece here on the bottom. And if you look closely, there's a little ejection port. I hope you can see that. The ejection port, that's where the water comes out. See, on the bottom here, you've got this propeller that ejects the water, and the water goes where, that's fa that, where that faces. So depending on how you align this up, there's three different, uh, three different alignment holes, and they're all the same, so there's, you can change it three different ways, that you can uh, change the ejection angle just by adjusting this piece. So let's put this back on. It's a little backwards. It's lefty to, to tighten it instead of righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now the other the other thing is this whole sleeve, and this is how you clean this unit. So you take this sleeve off, 
and you now have access to the repeller, the heating element, and here you can clean the heating element. Sometimes I've, I've soaked this in vinegar. You'll get some hard water deposits, or even if you don't have hard water, you still get water deposits. And this is actually pretty clean considering how many gallons of water we've heated with this unit. Cleaned it a couple of times, but it, it stays pretty clean considering. Um, so now, depending on how you, the sleeve also goes on, has three different, uh, actually four different points that it connects to. So depending on how you put the sleeve on, that can also change the angle of the subjection port. Now the easiest way, and sometimes I just, I don't even touch this because it's kind of pointless, is the mounting bracket. So this, my only complaint about this mounting, mounting bracket, and I guess I'm sure they did it for a reason, but is the contact point on this as it screws in and tightens on whatever, um, whatever you're using, whether it's a bucket or a pan, it's instead of being larger, it's just kind of a, a single point. I can kind of see why they did it just for versatility because you can probably mount this to, you know, whether it's you know, a circular pan or rectangular, whatever. Um, but it would be nice to have it be a little more sturdy, um, have this mounting point a little thicker so it makes more contact with whatever vessel it is that you're mounting it to. So in this case, all you do is slide it on there, and if you take a look down here, you can look at, you can see that port right there. So depending on how you mount it, you can change the angle uh, that the water comes out just by turning the entire unit itself. It's really that easy. Whereas again, with the Jewel, it's stagnant. There's, this does not move. None of, none of these pieces move. It comes out this port for some reason, I don't know. Uh, Chef Sips probably had a reason for doing that, why I have no clue. If someone can tell me, I would love to know. So, what we do is we take our container here. If we can see that. Mount this. Screw her down. Or get her done, I guess, however you want to say it. <laughs> Now once that's tightened, all I have to do is to change the direction that the water's coming at the ejection port is loosen this here and just rotate. It's really that simple. And then once I like the angle, tighten that down. Plug it in and we're good to go. And again, when it comes time to adjust anything on the unit. I keep saying unit, that's on the ANOVA. You've got this screen here and you'll see later in the testing, the screen lights up, it gives you the current temperature, the temperature that you are shooting for, there's a start and stop button, and that's really about it. But you can also change from Fahrenheit to Celsius and set a timer right on the screen. It's kind of a pain because you have press and hold wait for a beep, set a timer, press and hold, wait for a beep, it comes back to the temperature, uh, temperature reading, and then you can start it. But you can set everything right on, uh, right on the unit, on the screen, without an app, and it works great. So we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Okay, so having gone over the exterior, basic exterior of each unit, and kind of my pros and cons, as far as functionality. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test on how long it takes each unit to heat water from cold up to 144 degrees, which is where I cook chicken. Now, as a tip to everyone, anyone, uh, I'm assuming most people have probably caught on to this, but as a tip to anyone that sous vide a lot, uh, the number one thing I don't think you should do is ever put cold water in and just leave it up to the circulator to heat the water up. That's just a lot of waste of electricity uh, and wear and tear on the unit, on the circulator. What I do is I get the hottest water I can out of my tap, which actually in my case are, uh, my, furnace, or my uh, water heater's turned way up. So in my case, actually it's 152 degrees that comes out of the tap. So I'll maybe turn it down a little bit and I can usually get it within 
five degrees or so of what I want to cook it at, what I want to cook my meat at, whether it's 128 degrees for steak, 135 for shrimp, 144 for chicken, I can usually get it within five degrees right out of the tap. There's no reason, your water heater has already done the work to heat the water. There's no reason to use more energy, more wear and tear on the circulator. Uh, it's going to take much longer to get the water from cold up to your cooking temp. The circulator is going to take a lot longer than it is just get hot water out of your tap. So there's a tip for everyone, is use the hot water right out of your tap. Your water heater has already done the hard work and it's already got that water up to probably at least 120 degrees even on a, uh, even on a low setting. Mine's on a high setting. It'll probably die sooner because it works over time, but I like hot water. So it comes out of my tap at 152 degrees. So use the, use the hot tap water and you'll be cooking a hell of a lot faster than if you use cold water and just wait for the circulator to bring the water up to temperature. So now, even though I said don't do that, just for testing, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to take two buckets of, two equal size buckets. Let me get these out. They are, oops, identical. Other than the fact one has just been used more than the other. They are both, looks like 15 liters. I'm going to fill it to this indent mark here. You can see that or not. That's where I do all my cooking because that's a good level. And then as I add bags and bags of chicken or whatever cooking, the water level, of course, increases. So I'm going to fill both of them to that level with cold water straight out of the tap. Yes, I'm just doing this in my home kitchen. Uh, we do have a business and commercial kitchen, but it's just easier to do it here at home. So let me fill these up and stick the temperature in both of them. I'm going to have to get a power strip because I don't have two plug-ins right here, and then we'll see, and I'm going to time it and see just how long it takes each one of them to come to 144 degrees for chicken. Okay, so I'm waiting for the second uh, bucket of water to fill. I do have them both plugged in. You can see there's this little LED on the front of the jewel. That's really all there is. This is nice about the ANOVA, is it gives, I had to use a power strip here, we'll see if it cooperates. Uh, on the front of the ANOVA, there is a start button, a Bluetooth button, and if you press and hold the Bluetooth button, you can set it. You can actually set a timer on the unit itself. You can also change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius right on the unit. It can be a bit of a pain, but it does work. Um, and this wheel, you can see the bottom number there, this wheel adjusts the temperature that you want it to cook at. And the top number is what the temperature probe currently reads, 73.2. Uh, it's not exactly an atmospheric uh, thermometer, but 73.2, that's actually pretty accurate to the temperature in the room at the moment. So this other bucket is just about full. And I'm going to temp the water. I'm going to stir it a little bit just to agitate the water and then use my instant read thermometer and make sure both of them are pretty much on par. Okay. We have bucket one, bucket two. Looking through the back of the camera, you can tell this one's been used more. It's, it's a little yellow, and this one's newer. That doesn't affect the test whatsoever. And looking at the water levels, at least from what I can see right here, they look just about on, on par, about the same. So let me. See, now ANOVA will actually, I can turn it way down and stir it, but let's see what we get with just water as is. 65 degrees for the jewel water, so I'm going to put the jewel on this side. Interesting, 64 degrees. All right, so it will get a one degree offset then when I start timing. So let's go ahead and mount these. Let's see. Actually like this a little differently. Let me put it back together. Of course I screwed it up. Alright. That's ideal right there, especially for the video. The other thing I like about the ANOVA, it's, 
since it has a screen, it tells me what the current temperature is without actually having to set it down. So let's turn this, tighten this guy down. So it, it is a little more work to actually get it going. So right now it reads 64 flat. I think it was 64.1 is the second go, but 64 flat. And I want to heat it to 100 and 44 degrees like I'm doing chicken. I'm going to go ahead and put the jewel in. I'm going to put it over here so you can see it. And again, there's no screen on the jewel. Let's bring these together. Same amount of water, basically the same temp. And I have to use the, I have to go and use the phone app to set the jewel. So I'm going to set it to 144 degrees. When I press the power button, it's going to start. And as soon as I hit the power, I'm going to start a timer. So I'm going to hit, see if I start at the same time. Okay, so the ANOVA beeped. It's reading 65.5. Or not ANOVA, I'm sorry, the Joule. Finally, once you start it, it actually gives you a reading as to what it currently sees. And now that it's spinning, it's 60, 65.7 on the Joule and 65.6 on the ANOVA, so they're pretty darn close. So I'm going to go here. Let's go ahead and start a timer. I don't know if this can be seen or not. Check. Now one thing I'd actually like to show, even though the camera's on a tripod, I'm going to move it, is the circular motion of the... I'm just going to pull this. Sorry about that. I'm going to pull this off the tripod. Now, I want to show the circular motion of the water because the way I've got it lined up, it circulates versus if I go over here and look at the jewel, it does have agitation, but it's it's just shooting the water straight out against this wall. So again, I would love to know if anybody's done some te if anyone's done testing to figure out if that has made a big difference or not. Uh, I would personally think that being able to direct it in this way would be a lot more effective. Now, I haven't done enough research, so I can't say for sure, but I'm, I would guess that Jewel and Chef Steps has, they have some alternate mounting maybe for the Jewel to allow it to uh, circulate the water better at a, at a different angle, but I can't, I can't say for sure. Like I said, I've only had this thing for a couple of days. I've only used it a couple of times. It is rated, the wattage on it is rated a lot higher. Uh, 300 watts higher and the capacity of what you can there we go back in the tripod the capacity of what you can uh, heat up with it is double so even though it only has 300 300 watts more it's double the rating so this should be very interesting or if I can put the phone here so this is the downsides you have to use a phone I don't know that there's a way for me to... I don't want to drop my phone in the water. At least not today. Man, I don't you actually going to see that. I really should have thought of this beforehand. Get creative. Oh no, don't turn off Jewel. Cancel. There we go. So already, let me adjust this angle here. Got to get a better tripod, I got to be honest. So already, the Jewel, quite frankly, is kicking the Anova's ass. It's already four, almost four degrees uh, up on it. 
again, they're both, they both started at, the Nova started at 64, the Jewel started at 65, so it's a one degree difference. So the Nova is at 73, so we give it the offset of one, it's actually at 74.3, and the Jewel is at 77. So I've had to move the jewel because the jewel's over here. I think the power strip I'm using couldn't quite handle. The combined 1900 watts that these two units draw combined. start this okay I'm gonna swap these out so I can get that set there correctly okay so the jewel is heated now we're tracking the amount of time the extra amount of time that it takes for the ANOVA to hit that 144 versus the Joule. Almost there. See, in the higher temps, it really, I think it's that 800 watt heater versus 1100, it really struggles. And this, in this extra 30 some minutes to get to 144, the jewel would probably be in the 180 degree range by now. And that's just a guess. Okay, we're going to go ahead and call it. There it goes. Stop. Okay, 32 minutes. 48 seconds. So it took more than a half an hour longer for the ANOVA to hit 144 than the Joule. Okay. With a total time, let's see if that gets in there, total time of 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 27 seconds. So I'll do the math real quick. Get a subtract a 32 off of blah 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 and yeah, we're somewhere in the 45 minute range for the even for the jewel to hit uh, 144 from cold. Again, you're not going to do that. It's just a test of the heater itself and how efficient it is. So let me get eight cups of ice for each, and I'll come back and we'll do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've decided I'm just doing four cups of ice per. Uh, bucket um, eight. Nah, that's just gonna take too much time. I don't have all day. So I'm gonna dump. I'm gonna give. I'm actually gonna give the A Nova because I think it's at the at the biggest disadvantage. I'm gonna give it the uh, the leg up. I'm gonna put the ice in the in the A Nova first. It'll give it a few more seconds, and also I'm gonna give it the ice that came out of my refrigerator first. So that ice has actually been sitting for an extra minute or so longer than the ice in the jewel. So. Thank you. 
all nice and loose, so it pours in. And in it goes. Get it all in there. There's only four cups. Okay, four cups of icing both. That's that actually cooled it down even more than chicken usually would. Wow! So already the. Five minutes, 25 seconds longer to recover than the jewel. Uh, I'll go back and look at the video. I think there's at least 20 or 30 seconds um, head start that the Anova had. So we're probably looking at about six minutes longer to recover from that test. So in the end, I think we've got two really great products. Um, they each have their, their pros and cons. Uh, the pro for the Anova, for me. It's been an absolute workhorse. It keeps working day in, day out. It hasn't failed me once. Uh, it's got this nice screen, so I don't have to worry about using my phone, which is nice. Um, it's, you can control the direction of the flow, which is very nice. There's three different ways to, change, to, to adjust that. Uh, versus the jewel, you can't really control it, at least from what I can see at all. Um, obviously, the downside is uh, the power. Uh, the 800 watt versus the 1100 watt is a drastic difference. Um, now the heating from cold up to 144, that was just for a test. Most people aren't going to do that. Like I said, please use the hottest water you can possibly get out of your tap. Sometimes, like in my case, it's actually too hot, so I'll have to turn it down a little bit. I'm kind of trying to match it to the temperature I want to use. Um, but the rebound is very important, and that it, it, the jewels uh, showed itself, and that it rebounded at least six minutes faster. Um, with the ice test, not sure how scientific that really is, but uh, I did it, and there is a definite, a definite difference. And given the fact that they're both the exact same price, $199, um, right now I'd probably have to go with the Jewel. Um, we'll see how it stands up over the next year of use. Um, the one thing I would go, the only reason I'd probably right now buy another a Nova is that I know it just runs and runs and runs and keeps running. We'll really have to see how the longevity of the Jewel holds up versus the A Nova. So, um, if anyone has any questions, please leave them down below. Um, if anybody at A Nova would like to send me, uh, I don't need to keep it just as a test unit, send me a brand new uh, A Nova circulator just to redo this test. I'll completely redo this test again because uh, I know this isn't 100% on its peak efficiency because it's been used so much, it's got to have dropped off a little bit. But I don't think it's dropped off nearly enough to make up the performance gap. So, thank you all for watching. Keep sous -vide.